Sir, is it audible? You are going to call. Two other people in the call. Your camera is on. Your microphone is on. Good afternoon, sir. Control is your microphone. I'll start the class. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to start. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Control E. Your camera is on. A very good morning to all the learners. So we are back uh, on Monday with the uh, four uh, another four units to be covered, and we'll be covering today unit eleven, that is recruitment and selection. Then unit twelve, that's about induction and placement. Unit thirteen, staff training and development, and unit fourteen, motivation and productivity. So let's start with the unit eleven. What is um, recruitment and selection? Now uh, we all have a you know uh, like a basic idea what is recruitment all about, but still then how the process takes place in an organization we will let you know. So uh, recruitment and selection basically when we talk about recruitment it is the key responsibility of this uh, HR department, and for the selection process the recruitment takes place so both are interconnected, and the HR department they work in various. Uh, areas like right from employee engagement, then the development of employees. That uh, that's about your induction, then training, staff training and development, which we'll be discussing in today's class. Then uh, there are data management and many areas. So one of the key areas focus for HR is to attract, then select, and train the candidates as per the requirements of the organization. And uh, first thing is that we need to identify, we need to attract and hire the most qualified, uh, you know, uh, candidates for a specific job of, of an organization. And this involves a lot of uh, processes, a lot of strategies, then stages to ensure that the right candidate is being selected for the, uh, I mean, in the right position for the right job. So first thing is why do we need an appropriate recruitment and selection process? Now this recruitment uh, process, you know, like basically starts from the very initially, like you can say, uh, you know, it spe uh, specifically starts with first you need to identify the need for a new employee. Uh, like it's not that you know an organization uh, may be having a vacancy. So that is the time when the recruitment process takes place. So you know there are a lot of stages you can see. So when there is a need for a new employee or a vacant position has been created, uh, so in that time within the organization, that is the time when the recruitment process takes place. And this could be, uh, you know, why and uh, this uh, why the vacancy has been created. There may be several reasons. You know, some of them might have left for a better job, so the vacancy is created. There might be superannuation, like uh, you know, uh, you can say retirement, and or you need to have a specified skills. You know, earlier, like as I told you in the HR department, earlier there was only a HR department, human resource department, also known as the personal department. But now, what happened? Uh, specifically, I'm talking about the hotel hospitality industry, the hotel industry. You can say. You know, they have divided the HR department into two sections. There is another department which is known as the training department. Why this training department? Because they are the one who basically recruits the trainees, you know, for internship. And as per, you know, requirements of the various departments of a hotel, they uh, take uh, students for internship and they have to ensure that the proper training is being given to them. And because this trainee's internship, you know, it may vary from three months to six months. So usually they are not the employees of the organization. 
they don't get much benefits of the organization they don't they are not on the uh, salary structure but yes they are giving some incentives and all you know so uh, that is how that is known as uh, stipend like basically these interns are being given stipend now this this uh, training like recruitment process this is you can say this training department you know they keep on having uh, interns for various departments and especially depending on the uh, uh, you can especially depend on the uh, you can see uh, uh, situations like especially like during you know uh, marriage parties or during uh, Christmas celebrations or New Year's party or different types of events that are being organized in the uh, hotel. So, you know, that time more staff is being required, more workforce is being required. So, they try to fill up the gap by getting all the interns. So, these interns are very usually for a short uh, duration, as I told you, three months, six months. So, that is where the training department comes and they provide the necessary skills requirements and they keep on shifting suppose a hotel management graduate you know who is undergoing a hotel management uh, course you know when he goes for an intern to a hotel then there are the four major departments like the front office the housekeeping the food production that is the kitchen then the food and beverage service food and beverage service means where the restaurants bars the how the food is being served to the guests that is so these are the four major departments where the students need to undergo the training but sometimes what happens you know depending on the uh, situation depending suppose you know this is the time when we have a lot of events exhibitions or conferences taking place so what happened this uh, uh, department, the training department, they usually try to, uh, uh, you know, uh, locate, uh, uh, I mean, identify these uh, trainees and they try to put them on the departments, put them in those departments where the, uh, its uh, requirement is more necessary. But whereas the HR department, what they do, they usually take care of the employees who are already working with the organization for a long time because the salary is there, the leave is there, uh, then there you have a different, um, uh, you know, one second. Huh? Uh, so you have uh, different, uh, 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 I mean, the uh, sub departments also. So as per the requirements necessary, this is the training departments uh, take care of the trainees, whereas the HR department, they take care of the employees. Employees means the staff who are working in the organization for a long time. So they might be having bonuses, they might be having leaves, they, yeah, then their promotions are there. So they take care of those, all those uh, activities. Whereas the training department, that is the training and development, they ensure that proper interns are being come and proper division of work is there as well as you know there are a lot of uh, changes are being so to implement all those they also uh, create different modules for this uh, their staff that is internal as well as external internal staff is those who are for the employees you know because the employees there are a lot of as i told you there are a lot of changes taking places especially in the uh, your uh, it you know because in the IT also hotels do have a lot of uh, like, you know, softwares where they need to work on this. So especially to uh, make them aware of this software, you need to give them proper training. So they uh, usually uh, module, they usually develop all those modules and as and when required, they impart the training to the uh, staff. So the HR departments take care of all those, whereas the training and uh, development department, you know, they take care of the, especially the interns and all this type of training modules when required. So um, when we talk about the recruitment, it is basically this uh, uh, process, like the recruitment process. They start with first, I mean, there are a lot of processes. They start with identifying the need for the new employee, why it is required. And this could be, as I told you, this could be due to uh, retirement, like superannuation or, you know, some of the positions have been uh, developed because the existing uh, staff has been given a, a promotion. So naturally, a vacant position occurs. And the first step in the recruitment process is to create a job description. Okay, and job specification for the particular 
uh, role. So this outlines the when we talk about the job description, as we have uh, already mentioned earlier, when we talk about the job, uh, the outlines about the job description, it includes, it basically outlines the responsibilities, the qualifications required for a particular position, then the skills that is being required for that position. So the organization can sometimes, you know, advertisement on the newspapers, then they can also, you know, websites to their websites. Like most of the organizations, you know, they usually try to give the, uh, you know, uh, this uh, advertise on their websites. So instead of uh, advertising on the newspapers or other sites, they usually advertise on their websites or there are other uh, different um, uh, uh, <clears throat> recruitment sites also. Okay, so through those, they advertise the job opening and through various channels, you can see, such as job boards and the social media handles are also there, like LinkedIn and all, then a professional network, like LinkedIn is a professional network. So where they give this various advertisements. And after receiving the uh, applications, the next step is to screen. You have to screen and shortlist the candidates. Now, you, what is that process is basically taken care by the um, uh, your uh, HR department. Uh, they have to uh, screen the uh, applications. Then they need to shortlist the candidates based on their qualifications, based on their experience. And this can be, you know, this is how it is being done. This can be done through reviewing the resumes. Then, you know, sometimes interviews are taking place, phone, uh, you know, telephonic interviews that the interview is taking place through telephones. Then uh, you also now do have this Google Meet. The interviews are also being taken through Google Meets and, you know, other uh, social media handles and all. So that is a the platform they use. One is to telephonic interview, another is to different uh, platforms, and also face-to-face -face interviews there. Now, what happened? Now, when these uh, platforms, different social media platforms have come, so it is becoming easier for the employers as well as for the, uh, you know, those applicants who are applying for the particular job because they did not, you know, uh, have to travel to long-distance places. Once the interview is taken place through a, uh, proper, <clears throat> you know, uh, way manner like uh, different um, Google Meets or you know this type of um, uh, platforms. Then once it is being done, and the employer as well as the um, applicant also have a, you know, they can uh, face to face on the. Uh, of course, it's on the social. You can see. I mean, uh, uh, it's on uh, not uh, like you know physical. But yes, they can have. And after that, once it is being properly done, there are a lot of phases also. Once it is being done, the, uh, pro the person can go to the company and join the organization. But yes, before this, uh, you just need to know, <clears throat> like, you know, uh, the shortlisted candidates are being then invited for a further assessment, and uh, which may include, like, you know, as I told you, interviews are there tests are there, like, you know, uh, test means you have to sit on the uh, different, uh, <clears throat> uh, like, you know, different organizations have different uh, ways of uh, this recruitment process, methods of recruitment process, how they do the recruitment. So some of them have just interviews, some of them might be having written tests and all, and assessments also, different assessments are being given to evaluate their skills as well as knowledge and, uh, you know, depending on the suitability for the role. Now, during the selection process, now organizations may also conduct like, you know, background checks, like, you know, uh, their, about their educational qualifications, about their experience. And the, another major thing is the reference, you know, reference checks and verify those qualifications as well as the uh, experiences required. So to ensure the accuracy of the information that is being provided by the candidates. And the first, and the this was the first like middle steps and all. And the final step is to make the job offer <clears throat> to the selected candidates. And then comes negotiating the terms of employment, such as what would be the salary given, what would be the salary provided, what are the perks and benefits that are associated with the organization and <clears throat> the starting date, like when you'll be starting, because Usually when a 
the candidate, you know, suppose he's working for an organization, then he wants to switch uh, to a new organization. One sec. I'm in the front office lab. You can come there. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Sorry for the inconvenience. Okay. <coughs> so, yes. Uh, so, uh, what? Uh, no, so, you need to, you know, as I told you, there are interviews, there are written tests, then there are assessments to evaluate the skills, there are qualifications. Uh, as per uh, suitable for the particular position. Now, then comes the um, uh, right, and then comes the you know uh, your uh, reference checking, like you know your educational qualifications, your uh, your uh, experiences, then your reference uh, list, reference checks. So to find the accuracy of the informations that the candidate has provided for the recruitment process, and the final step is to offer the job. You know, that is job offering and to the selected candidates and then comes, you know, negotiating uh, terms of employment. What are the negotiating terms such as what are the salaries, what are the benefits that would be provided and what is the da uh, date of starting? As I was telling you, when a, um, <clears throat> when a, a person, you know, was working with an organization, then he, he or she has to leave the organization and then join a new organization. So obviously, the existing organization he's working with, associated with, he has to give them a notice period. So usually that notice period is one month or two months. So he can inform the uh, next organization, the uh, new organization which he's going to job, that he needs a period of maybe for two months. So that is where, how the starting date is being negotiated. Okay, Then recruitment and selection, they are very crucial process for any organizations because they have directly impact the quality of the talent that is being hired for the overall success of the organization. In my previous class, I have mentioned if this recruitment is very important because you know you are being selected on the basis of your qualifications as well as your uh, experience. And that is how once you are being selected, that is how your inputs, you know, that is very necessary for the uh, achievement of the goal of the organization. Because at the end of the day, you have to see how much revenue is being generated for the organization. So recruitment as well as the selection, they are very crucial process for any organization because the reason behind is they directly impact the quality of talent that is being hired and the overall success of the organization. Thus, you can put into words like effective recruitment and effective selection practices. They help the organizations and um, to attract and retain the skilled employees who can contribute <clears throat> to the achievement of any organizational goal. See, the thing is that first thing is selection. Yes, uh, you know, many organizations will be finding that the I'm talking about not about the government organizations. I'm talking about the private organizations in reference. So, you know, you'll find many um, uh, uh, private organizations, the staffs, you know, they are working for a very longer period of time, you know, maybe 10 years, 20 years, because they are satisfied, because it is very much necessary that the it's not only the um, guests or, you know, uh, like when you're talking about the tourism industry or the hospitality industry, it is not about the satisfaction of the tourists. Yes, it is there, but it is also about the satisfaction of the employees because they are the ones who are dealing directly with the guests. So they have to contribute, you know, to ensure that the, uh, the needs, the requirements of the guests are being met. And once this needs and requirements are being met, obviously there will be a flow of business. When there will be flow of business, more revenue will be generated and that would be that would result in the success of an organization. So the uh, each and every employee, you know, their contribution has a very important role in the growth of the organization, in the sustainability of the organization. Suppose, you know, especially in the hotel industry, we'll find a lot of 
uh, especially the staffs, you know, the employees they are living, the organization they will they are uh, they may be with the hotel for two or three years, then they shift to another hotel for a better career growth, for better position, for better salary benefits and all. So you know that is one of, but that shows that you are unable to retain the staff or employees of the organization. So it solely depends on the uh, HR department how to retain those candidates. Okay, so that is what is known as sustainability. That's why the reason the contribution of the employees, they really play a very important role in the sustenance of the business. And hence it is extremely important. You have to select the right person for the right job. And you know, uh, the impact to your business when you hire the wrong candidate is often much more than not hiring a person at all. You know, sometimes it really creates because if proper candidate is not had, then it would really create problem not only for the HR department because the HR department makes a selection along with the head of the department of a particular department. Okay, so you know that the suppose a person is being selected from a uh, for the uh, role of, you know, sales and marketing executive in a organization, in a travel agent company. And he has to deal with the sales and marketing, the head, he has to report to the head, he has to coordinate with the sales and marketing department. But if that is not being properly done, not properly coordinated, it, it would result a negative impact on the department. Because, because see, we spend not less than eight to nine hours one third of 24 hours in an organization. So you have to give your best. There are issues, sometimes you may not, you know, uh, uh, I mean, uh, you may not agree what your uh, super seniors are saying, but yes, you always, there should be a coordination, proper coordination is very much necessary. So recruitment is not only an operational activity, but it is a very key strategic activity for the business. Hence there is always a need for developing strong recruitment and the selection process. Now, as I told you, the right process, you know, reflects on the company's professional, how the company's professionalism, because they portray your organization's maturity in attracting the and hiring the right talent. You know, sometimes what happens, especially in the government organizations, Especially for government organizations, you don't have the selection process, you know, um, online, like, you know, they have offline, offline in the sense, there's a face to face interview. And suppose they have interviewed for a particular uh, position, and the candidates might have come 15 to 20 candidates, but they find none of the candidates are suitable for that particular position. So in that case, again, they a mention on their website you none of the candidates not suitably found suitably not found suitably not found he those are the candidates who had applied for the particular position they were not found suitably so again they have to uh, advertise so it's a very lengthy process and you know private you know it's a very uh, it's a you can say it is a very short term process like you know maybe within 2 3 months fine enough but government sometimes it may takes one year lengthy process you know they give the advertisement then the um, there are applicants then they scrutinize maybe after four or five months your interview uh, takes place and your interview process takes place then it takes some time to select and so this is a long process so uh, effective process helps what does it help an effective process it helps in creating of a talent pool in a proactive manner. You have to be very proactive, okay? And thus, uh, it helps in mid-term uh, business objectives as well as long-term business objectives. And recruitment also involves multiple stakeholders, including the senior level employees in an organization. And it really, you know, especially if you uh, wanted to select for an university, because, uh, you know, you all are students, you know, selecting, I mean, I'm uh, in respect to, you know, how the university works, you know, the head of the university is known as the vice chancellor. So, you know, especially when a vice chancellor superannuates, then 
again a vacant position is created for the post of uh, vice chancellor so you know you have to create a senior level employee then uh, they should have that type of experiences their qualifications so it really it also cost a lot in terms not only in terms of time but also in terms of money so hence one needs to ensure that this process is very well defined and optimized very much optimized customized in order to meet the needs of all the stakeholders now what are the enablers of a good recruitment process the enablers of a good recruitment process you know a few things to keep in mind to enable a smooth hiring experience you need to integrate job postings with the job description suppose you are applying for a you are a company is uh, giving an advertisement for a particular position so you know they need to mention you know they need to have this qualifications need to have minimum 10 years experience in a senior level position and this is a thing in some they further like especially in advertisement cost a lot especially advertisement costs a lot especially when the advertisement is given in newspapers and all but sometimes on the website you know they give everything in details like what is the job uh, description what is the uh, what uh, if you are being selected for i mean what is uh, the position uh, the requirements of the position beside uh, the qualifications and experience what is the job description what you need to perform like that is how it is been made so you need to you know now organizations what they do they create a database of job postings and link the vacancies also they they have a database of the do, uh, job postings and they link vacancies to well defined job descriptions and the skills so you know what happens this makes it very clear and easier for the recruiter the hiring manager and even the candidate so when the candidate applies for a particular position he just has to a uh, checklist you can do go through the checklist so this is the qualifications required he has this this is the minimum experience he requires after that you know it is also being further mentioned for a senior level position that you need to have an experience at this as an executive for 5 years then only you will be recruited for the uh, you are uh, you you are uh, you know you can apply for the senior level position for an organization so the thing is is basically it should be very customized it is very customized manner it should simplify the application process and you have to sell a job to the candidates at the same time the candidate has also to ensure that he has a proper uh, uh, cv curriculum vitae curriculum vitae prepared to attract the customers that is so you know what happens i mean sometimes it happens a complex application process puts of most candidates they don't know how to apply where to apply it's a very lengthy complex process so that should be avoided the uh, the application process should always work on all the devices including you know mobiles allow a seamless experience and candidate should be able to register once and submit their resumes to multiple positions now what happens it is easier there are many online sites um, job recruiters first it's not that you are just applying i mean putting your cv first you have to register yourself some are payable some are just free of cost payable means you have to pay some amount you have to register then you have to pay some amount and you can upload your cv so once you upload your cv depending on the needs requirements experience they do the selection process okay so now in some uh, online websites recruiters they don't um, uh, you know it is a free of uh, you can upload your resume without any cost freely okay it depends varies from organizations to organizations like we are talking about like what are the enablers of a good recruitment process then you have to display the job postings on your website then the publish the jobs on your career page you know or the dashboard and manage you also need to have manage the previously submitted resumes because you know sometimes if you uh, earlier you know they used to send the uh, resumes through post you know so that would that was a lengthy process now this what happened you have online so at any time you can access the recruiters the uh, companies the organizations they can access all this because it is already being kept in the database so 
uh, first, the, the, it is very necessary that you need to have a strong database so that allows easy tagging and searching. Okay. And you need to keep track of applicants and inform them of the new positions that have been created. Manage your candidates effectively, then assign interviewers to shortlisted candidates and automated reminders to candidates and interview. Now, everything is there. It's very automated and all. So you can, so the candidates would also be able to know when the interview is on, where the process, you know, sometimes you can go, suppose a uh, candidate has uploaded his uh, resume to a comp uh, to an organization. Then he can again go and check in the website, hey, what is the process, I mean, you know, the planning process, like how much it has been his uh, recruitment is, I mean, the selection process, how it will be taking. So they mention, you know, uh, scrutiny is going on. So you are sure that now the scrutiny will go on, uh, scrutiny is going on. Maybe they'll mention that after 15 days or after a month that the candidates will be informed about the date of uh, interview. So that is what happened. So you need to very much, why, why this is, this is basically track, uh, track, uh, tracking the process. So you have to streamline it. So you have to streamline the applicant tracking process and allow recruiters to accept. They need to review and manage resumes at a single location and maintain touch points with candidates. So it is very important to remain in touch with the candidates on a periodic uh, basis. You know, keeping in touch with them often builds relationships and they can reduce the time to hire for future recruitments both for these candidates and also the referrals because referrals is also very important because you know when a candidate is being uh, recruited for a selected when a candidate is being selected for a particular organization there's a reference list so the recruiter also asked about uh, to the reference you know how he is how his uh, performance is that is what matters so you have to have that uh, f uh, that uh, reference list okay that is referral is very important have a robust onboarding process. Onboarding process is basically your orientation and induction that we are having in the next, uh, uh, I think, yes, induction and placement is in the next uh, unit. So maintain data on the recruitment process. And similarly, to interactively improve the recruitment and selection process, you need to maintain meticulously the data related to the different process and different uh, recruitment metrics uh, there are different met uh, different recruitment ma metrics that you can manage uh, include what how many resumes have been received then what are the resumes that have been shortlisted then what interviews are you know uh, the uh, applicants have been informed about the interviews then there are also some no shows you know they don't connect then there are offers after the recruitment and selection process uh, takes place there is an offering letter then you know, when they have like, you know, like this is the time usually when they try to hire candidates, then time to fill and so on. So everything is very mentioned on the website of the organization. See, now everything is so easy, so they can easily find out what are the important needs requirements. Okay, so selecting the right employee is an important goal for the recruitment team and establishing the correct process can enhance. I mean, uh, you can say, uh, the experience of the candidate, the interviewer, the hiring manager, and the HR department, as well as it can also increase the effectiveness of your business. So the whole recruitment process, you can see the whole recruitment process is an important goal for the recruitment team. And establishing the correct process can enhance the experience of the candidate, as I told you. Now, this is very easily being done with the help of technology. We all know earlier it was not possible, but with the help of technology, now it is very, very uh, smooth and very effective as well as, you know, time uh, Time is was an important factor. So doesn't make, take much time, doesn't take much money. You have, you need to have internet, you need to have that uh, software. Once you receive the, uh, uh, you know, applications, from the applicant, you can scrutinize them, you can shortlist them. Then at one click, you can send or everyone, those who are being shortlisted, that you have to attend the interview on so and so day at this destination. So this is all, you know, so much, you know, technology has made our life so easier. Okay, so that is how. 
so and hr professionals they should also ensure that they follow the proper uh, follow the correct recruitment and selection process and very very important they attract the best workforce for their organization okay that is what is important so now i have just shown you this is the difference between recruitment and selection what is i have uh, you can just what is the meaning basically recruitment this is a process of searching for appropriate employees and encouraging them to apply for jobs whereas the selection it is identifying and choosing the best person out of a number of prospective candidates for a job is known as selection nature it is a positive recruitment is a positive uh, process because it stimulates people to apply for a job okay whereas selection is a negative process as that is the time where many candidates are being eliminated okay instead of selection okay now came the purpose recruitment purpose its aim is to create a pool of applicants and purpose selection for the purpose its aim is to ensure that competent that you have to ensure that you know the candidates you are uh, calling for interviews they are the best because they had a very positive they need to have a very positive impact on the performance of the organizations i mean how they performance and also the uh, each organization has some objectives and goals so these goals and objectives are being facilitated by the uh, applicants you know i mean employees so you have to ensure that the right selection is being made and stage and recruitment it starts before the selection process and selection it starts after the recruitment process and step recruitment it is the first step towards the hiring process and selection it is the when we need to hire it is the second step towards the hiring process and it comes after recruitment as i have told you that both go hand in hand okay then the economical or expensive economical or expensive recruitment is an economical process uh, that means and selection is an expensive process you know why because you have to call the candidates in some organization they also give you to and fro uh, fair you know that also some are obviously those are blue chip companies not like this but yes i just and of course some government organizations they also do provide okay so that is these are the factors which influence an uh, applicant's decision okay and as i've also told you what are the characteristics of a, a recruiter what you need to do so uh, this is uh, this was the last slide of the recruitment and selection process so now <clears throat> moving to our next um, now moving to our next uh, uh, slide <clears throat> that is on um, uh, induction and placement okay just uh, Wait for two minutes. I'll just change the slide. So we are going to the next uh, PPT that is on induction and placement. so induction and placement that is very important okay um, yes i'll show you this ppt So this is our uh, unit twelve, where we have about induction and placement. Yes. So what does induction mean basically? When we join an organization, you know, we are new to that organization, so we don't know about the organization. 
uh, whether it's you know uh, like uh, uh, the you know when a, an organization they are having various uh, departments you know right from the operations then there's the marketing sales and marketing department then there you have the uh, hr department then you have the uh, you know uh, your uh, uh, the, the accounts department which is also very important you know sometimes you you maybe you might have noticed that you are having been uh, your salary you are supposed to get the salary for 29 uh, 30 days but you have been given the salary for 20 days some mistake can error so in that case you can always inform the hr department and the hr department will make you uh, i mean it is a process through where you have to go to the hr department then the hr department will give will tell you to refer to the accounts department so why now why i told about all this because on when you are new to the organization you don't know where the departments are whom to approach whom to address you know so then that is the reason why you have to know about that is also known as selection and all you know like before joining an organization you know some induction is being given you know that is this is the organization and all so that is very important now we are talking about induction as well as the selection uh, the placement okay so basically after the selection process the next step is induction and placement i'm just telling the first process we have the recruitment then it is being followed by selection i told there's so many stages you know then the selection then after the selection you have the induction so after the selection process the next process the next step is selection induction and placement which is a very important now what do you mean by induction induction is basically it refers to the process of introducing the newly hired employee newly hired staff to the organization that is i told you about the various departments but yes beside the various departments you should also need to know about the policies the procedures the work culture of that organization culture environment in the work culture so this helps what happens this specifically <clears throat> this specially helps the employees to become familiar okay it helps the employees to become familiar with their role with their job responsibilities with their expectations because when they join an organization they come with lot of perceptions you know this is so once the induction is being done so you, it is basically made to become familiar with the staff with the policies the procedures the job responsibilities their role their expectations okay now during the induction process organizations may provide orientation sessions so there are orientation sessions there are various training programs and mentorship to help the new employee settle into their role and become what they become very productive quickly because they need to be because the productivity is very important for an organization see uh, the class which i started today is uh, monday thursday i have taken a <clears throat> class of yours where i have shown you a video on mr narayan murthy because he has mentioned that 70 hours work in a week for the uh, youth so, you know some of them have objected some of them had agreed but some of them did not agree now he some of them those who didn't agree they say you know 70 hours a week it usually you if you have five days a week or six days a week then it comes uh, six around nine hours okay if it is uh, if it is a six days a week but some organizations they work for um, uh, just yours or uh, five days a week so you know those organizations which are working for uh, five uh, days a week for them they have to slog for 10 to 12 hours so they took the word as slog you know 70 hours is too much but no that is not the thing is see you know when you work there should be a healthy environment like you know a lot of when this uh, uh, 70 hours a week you know this was uh, floating all over the social media there are a lot of views lot of thoughts lot of opinions given by <clears throat> different um, you know uh, employers and CEOs of the companies. So sometimes what happens, 
you also see it is you know there is a saying uh, all work and play make jack a dull boy all work and no play makes jack a dull boy so what does it means you know if you always keep on working working you know at times you also need some break some refreshment you know you need to uh, refresh your mind so in that case you know organizations you know employees are working for 10 to 12 hours but they are giving lot of facilities you know the organization they work for especially the it sectors and many organizations they have you know uh, like in between they have a uh, i mean a coffee shop is attached to that uh, organization so if you feel like having coffee or if you feel like having some snacks in between you can go and have there are sometimes you feel like you know doing some uh, exercises so there is a small gym also there you know you can go to the gym and then you can do some like 5 10 minutes you know uh, exercises then you have a uh, rest room in the sense if you think after lunch i should go and uh, do some take a you know 5 minutes uh, break you know like maybe i want to see my mobiles or other things and all you can there are reading room also reading room is very important where you can go through the newspapers there are a lot of books about the companies policy about the company how it works its policies its uh, principles then case studies then uh, motivational thoughts because you know this is one way of so it is not necessary that if you work for 10 to 12 hours you will be All, the, all I mean, slogging. You can. There's also time required where you need to interact with the employees. So that is very important. Okay. So uh, uh, that is you need to become familiar. So spending. It's not that you know. Sometimes with what happens, you'll find many employees. If you, uh, you know, working at in a stretch for ten hours, you cannot give the best productivity. The thing is, at the end, your output is required. How much productive you are being. for the organization so even if you work for at 8 hours you work you can give the best even if you are being told to stay 12 hours you can stay in between you can take a rest or something you can take a break you can go for coffee uh, for a sip of coffee then you can go to the reading rooms where you can you know you have to know the policies new things are coming up your general knowledge then reading the newspaper what are the current events that are taking place then you have a tv in that room where for 5 10 minutes you just wanted to uh, you know go through various uh, news channels what's happening or you wanted to watch the cricket game or something what's the score and all so that is what happens you know now i mean depending on this looking the needs and requirements the organizations are doing so uh, during this um, you can say during the induction process i mean during the induction programs and all the organizations they provide a lot uh, they provide this orientation sessions okay then the training sessions and mentorship where you can you know you have a mentor if you have any issues or problems or if you have a project where you need to uh, go faster or a little bit slower so you have a team leader or whom you can who can act as a who can act as your mentor there are some organizations they are even keeping counselors also so what happens this helps the new employees settle into their role and become productive quickly and at the same time it also assists in building a very positive and supportive work culture work culture is very important for the new employee because in some organizations you will find you know employees are bitching about each other so that is not a healthy environment working environment because as i told you where you need to spend 9 to 10 hours you need to have a very positive input you know positive mind setup whether <clears throat> i am teaching whether you are a teacher where you are giving teaching the students or whether you are working on the computer it has to be very productive so in that sense in that respect you have to give your best so your mindset has to be very positive your working environment has to be very positive so who creates that positive people like you and me so you have to do that so once you are familiar you can do all this okay so you have to build a very positive and supportive work environment for the new employee and then comes the placement it is when we are talking about the placement it involves assigning the selected candidates to their designated role within the organization and this also helps them providing them with the necessary resources then you need the necessary tools and access to information required to perform their job effectively you know what happens now see those who are working in the it industry they are being given a laptop you know so 
if you have a laptop and if you're a productive guy and sensible uh, employee so you'll work with the you know what's there but sometimes what happens you know these uh, people you know like that uh, staff employees what they do they try to access you know they might be uh, accessing the facebook they might be accessing the instagram they might be accessing something else so what happened when these companies provide them with the laptop they are giving the access to only to their company's uh, website where you know because they need to work on various platforms so that you can work on those platforms you cannot like okay in between if you think i'll go to the facebook and check no that provision is not being given that distracts you so what i was telling so you have to given the proper tools like you are being given a laptop by the company but it should not be used for your personal use it should be used for your professional use at home you can have a other computer where you can use it for your personal but here only work related because that is an ethics these are all ethics and ethos of an organization you have to maintain that so you have to be provided with the proper resources you have to provided with the proper tools then so that you can access information to perform their job effectively now i gave you an example from the it industry similarly like for example like we are teaching okay now we want to access a um, lot of information research papers you know how everything is going on and i mean about we are suppose uh, my area of interest is uh, destinations you know marketing how to market a destination or about uh, how the uh, destination can influence the tourist to their uh, uh, food so in that case you know i have to access many research papers now there are many journals where you can easily access the journal that you can also access i can also access but there are many journals which you cannot access you can only see the abstract but the introduction part and the main uh, uh, paper you know that uh, includes your introduction the literature review the research methodology the um, you know collection of data and the result and the conclusion that you cannot access but yes who can access like if i am with an i am with an uh, university university being an employee of that university university gives me the access to collect the information so i can go i can go through many research papers okay of that particular journal so this is what is tool so when you are working for an organization if you are being given a lump sum you know if you are given a uh, you know homo uh, homogeneous work and if you are not being given the proper tools and resources then how you'll be able to uh, provide the uh, you know essence or of that you know productivity of that uh, of that particular job that you have been assigned so you have to give the proper resources and tools has should be given to the staff so the organization also you have a supervisor or a senior so whom you can uh, report to you know you are being given uh, this work and you are unable to process further because there were some you know obstacles or something so whom should you report to you always cannot go to the head of the department your general manager or the or the hr man i'm just telling you know for the solution you have to report to your senior who is the next senior to you so they can also act as your mentor so the organization also assigns a supervisor you can say or a mentor to provide you the proper guidance and support to the new employee during their initial period this is during the initial period now this effective induction and placement process are very much important they are very crucial for ensuring that you know new employees are feel welcome because sometimes what happens when you join a, join a new organization everybody is new to you you know you may not um, if you are very extrovert fine enough you go and introduce yourself you also come to know about the person then you have a proper communication interactive interaction and good but there are some uh, employees you know who are very new to the organization they are not extrovert they are very introvert you know they are always within their um, you can say uh, within their uh, periphery so you know they may not uh, interact but when you work it is always a team work you are attached to your department but you also sometimes need to coordinate with other teams so you have to be very 
uh, extrovert in that sense, you know, collecting information and all. So that is the reason why a mentor or supervisor is being provided so that he can guide you at the initial stage of your um, employment. Okay, so what happens, uh, yeah, you know, uh, as I tell you, especially it happens uh, in the uh, hospitality and tourism, a lot of uh, the, the uh, you know, uh, you can say, a uh, lot of employees, you know, they don't try to stick to the hotels one or two years there, then they shift to another uh, departments. Why it happens? Because maybe you are not properly being, uh, uh, you know, uh, you don't get the proper coordination or maybe on the other hand, you got a better uh, offer or something. But yes, it is very necessary, you know, induction, a proper induction and placement process, they are very important because the new employees, they not only feel welcome, but they are also being supported and prepared to contribute to the benefit of the organization, welfare of the organization. So what happens as a result, it helps in reducing the turnover rates. You know, it helps in turnover so that employees don't leave and leave the job, leave the organization and join another rate. Improving job satisfaction, that is what is very important. They come with a lot of perspectives. So you have to ensure that they are being satisfied. How they are being satisfied, if they work for extras, they should be given bonuses. I mean, if they work for extras, they should be given, you know, uh, you know, incentives. If they are able to uh, reach their target, they are being given bonuses and so on. Okay. So it helps in improving the job satisfaction and overall enhancing the employee engagement. So that is very important. So both recruitment and the selection process is being followed by induction and placement, which are a very integral process in the organizations. First thing is to hire and then uh, first thing is to attract and hire the most qualified candidates to ensure the smooth integration into the organization. And this process is also plays a very important role in building a talented pool of workforce okay talented workforce uh, who are and of course you can say talented and motivated workforce that can drive organizational success so especially when we talk about placement it is the determination of the job to which an accepted candidate is to be assigned uh, and his assignment to that job now you know uh, there are as i tell, told you there should be uh, employee engagement one minute. Huh? Yes. Now, what is uh, that? Is the uh, uh, your um, <clears throat> uh, right placement employability hub? You know, right placement of workers can have the following advantages. What are the advantages? Reduce labor turnover rate. One minute. Huh? Hello. Hmm. Hmm. Bolo. So, you know, right placement of workers can have the following advantages. What are the advantages like, you know, uh, reduce labor turnover rate, as I told you, you know, uh, if uh, the employees are not satisfied, then obviously they will leave the company and would join another. So you have to reduce labor turnover rate, reduced uh, absenteeism rate. If the employees are not happy with the uh, uh, work environment or the salary structure, sometimes bosses are not, you know, they are always very fussy, you know, not satisfied. You should know how to get the work done. That is very important. So sometimes, you know, the interns or employees, they do a lot of 
uh, absenteeism. So you have to reduce absenteeism rate, increase the safety of workers. This is the utmost important of safety and security of workers. So increase safety of workers and lower accident, especially in the hospitality industry, the hotel industry, because, you know, we have a kitchen food production department. So you, where you have to prepare food and there you have to uh, prepare the food on ovens, then tandoors, then you have to uh, on the fire, you know, uh, so you have, I mean that, you know, where safety and security is an utmost important. So increase safety of workers is very much necessary so that it would lower accidents. Increase the moral of workers. Sometimes, you know, you are not satisfied with your work or something. You think you are being burdened with a lot of work. So sometimes this, uh, uh, you know, a lot of uh, classes, uh, motivational classes are being also taken for the employees. So they are motivated. And, you know, sometimes small, small things which motivates the employee like you know you are an employee of an organization and your birthday falls on the particular date and you are being celebrated you, know, you are being given a cake with a gift hamper so you know you feel happy you feel welcome so that that you have to create that is what is environment is all about you have to create that positive environment so that is very important you should know the ethos so all these you know nowadays you might have seen and you uh, you um, uh, you, uh, I mean, you ought to do that also. There are motivational speech and all, you know, which really boosts your, uh, you know, moral values and all. So that is very necessary. So increase the moral of the employees and human relations, better human relations in the organization. If your boss says, go and get this work done, you know, you will feel frustrated. But if, you know, he, if he says that sentence, uh, see, if your work is not being done very smilingly, you know, very dynamic, uh, very in a diplomatic way, if this work is not being done in by five, then you have to stay for another one. So think what you do. Okay. So this is, you know, you have to be very dynamic in some cases and um, how to uh, keep because being a boss, you have to ensure like you need to have the leadership qualities that you should possess and it should always be a teamwork that would help to enhance the uh, productivity of an organization okay then um, you know as i told you like the job requirements are needed then you have the suitable qualifications is being required what are the qualifications so you need to select those candidates the job should be offered to only those person who is being suitably qualified then adequate information to the job incubator. You know, sometimes see what happens, they say with this, uh, when you are being given the job offer letter, it is being mentioned, you will be getting a LTC like leave travel concession or after, uh, during festivals, you will be given an, uh, you know, bonus with a gift hampers and all. Now, you know, uh, just wanted to say you like, uh, last time when I was uh, taking your class, that time Durga Puja was going on. Okay. So I shown you now Diwali is going to come. So, you know, in Diwali, I'll show you one how Diwali is being celebrated in India. So that is also, you know, a lot of celebration that is in another, this is coming Sunday. So uh, maybe tomorrow, if I get time, I'll show you how that Diwali is being celebrated. That is a major festival, a very big festival, which is being celebrated, uh, you know, and what happened, the or companies, you know, they give uh, huge bonuses. I mean, depending on, you know, the companies they work for, like you, even small companies, they give, you know, sweet boxes or gift hampers to their employees and some gifts, you know, like uh, some companies, they pro give you like, um, uh, like stuff like, you know, um, uh, mobiles or iPhones or your um, laptops, you know, all these uh, bonuses they give you. And of course, depending on the productivity, depending on the, you know, if the uh, company runs on profit, they will obviously want to share. You know, in some uh, organizations, they also give you golden, um, you know, I mean, all these uh, small, small, you know, uh, pendants, earrings, finger rings made of gold, gold earrings and all. That isn't good because, you know, and employees, you know, they look forward when this Diwali is going to come and they would get this gift. So these are, you know, tomorrow I'll show you a video if that is. So you'll have an idea. Now, this is a time they are really, they really look forward to. He, you know, this time, what is the gift we are getting? Because they, the companies, they keep it a secret, you know, uh, especially uh, those uh, companies, you know, where the productivity is high. They really, because one thing they have to ensure that the, staffs are satisfied and once the staffs are satisfied usually the the productivity would 
increase okay then uh, as i told you there are object you know there are strategic objectives how to um, uh, influence the employees so they can give more hours and uh, rather than leaving him to make his own way through the organization so the new employee on his joining the organization must be helped they must be adjust they must be welcome they must, must be adjusted and get acquainted with their fellow employees as well as the work environment so it is uh, better to properly and systematically introduced him to the company what is the company's mission what is the company's vision what is the company's mission what is the company's uh, philosophy and its place in the economy how important he's working for you know sometimes you work for a blue chip company so you can proudly say i work for this company you know because lot of benefits are there so they should the company should um make an awareness to the this is why induction is you know they need to give they should know where it is placed in the industry or the economy that is very important and its policies and rules regulations and so on so you know these are some of the conducts new employee uh, employee uh, orientation pro, uh, how the program is like you know what are the rules what are the standing orders what are the safety measures ha ah, yes one thing i just left it out that is the grievances procedures if you do have some grievances and all no like uh, um, you have some uh, you are not uh, you know somebody has misbehaved with you or you know you think that you are being burdened with lot of work you have some grievances so there is a grievance cell also you can go to the grievance cell and you can address your grievances and that will be taken care by the hr department and sometimes you think that you have completed your training program you are on on the job training you are now when you are been um, inducted for a new new em, a new employee you are being uh, take given the position of on the job trainee as an trainee executive okay so after the completion of the uh, training you have to be given you know uh, selected for that particular position so on the job training is basically means once you complete the training you are being given the position and once you are given the position you get the you are in the salary structure of that company you are being given perks you are being given benefits depending on the performance of your work you are being also given the promotion okay so basically all this career uh, advancement schemes and you can also have the counseling um activities if anyone requires so these are the key hr elements like you know as i have tell, told you how the job is being designed selection and placement there's diversity compensation so these already i have covered and uh, proper detailed instructions has to be uh, imparted to the trainees uh, to the trainees to the employees to the newly uh, uh, you know uh, new employees that is very and it should be conducted Uh, by a specialist that is very important so the main purpose is to find out whether the employee is reasonably satisfied or not see if you are a new employee if you leave one uh, uh, if you leave one company and join another company so when you have to fit in yourself but on the other side the company also wants to see that you are being satisfied so they have to uh, ensure they should find out they should identify that you know um, the key uh, the resources tools are being provided to you properly imparted and you are satisfied with the uh, rules i mean you are satisfied with the uh, perks benefits that is also being offered on your job letter sometimes you know what happen on the job offer letter they give you lot of uh, benefits but once you join the organization you find it is uh, deviating you know it is not happening as per it was promised you know it happens with many organizations so that you have to so then what happens the uh, staff they say are we were being promised with this uh, benefits but we are not being provided so you have to ensure that everything matches so uh, this is you know organization culture program uh, this is very important organization culture provide profile you should be innovative at the same time you should be aggressive aggressive in the sense like your work is being done you should outcome oriented what is you if you put every day 10 hours then the outcome should be good it's not that you know you put 10 hours but half of the time you are not practicing your work you know 6 hours 7 hours you work and another 5 6 hours you are doing some other related activities so you should be outcome oriented then you should be stable you should be people oriented when we are in a we are in a field which is hospitality and tourism tourism you know so we have we are customer oriented because once a customer is satisfied 
you did not think business will automatically arise okay so that is how so you should be people oriented customer oriented team oriented yes you have to work together and it should be a very detail oriented so this is how the organization culture of an organization should be okay so thank you uh, this is already completed i'll move to the induction the next one is 13 so we completed the induction and placement now we'll move to unit 13 that is staff training and development okay so before that i'll just show you a small video uh, i'll just show you a small video okay one second Now, this is about the induction, okay? Uh, induction, orientation, and socialization. You kindly see this video, okay? One minute. See, where can I find the subway? Subway is also a food outlet. But this is not the subway he is trying to. See, reserve for CEO. So, proper orientation is very much necessary. See, he is introducing to his CEO, Chief Executive Officer, okay? Thank you. 
so you understood like this was a uh, thing like you know induction is very important this uh, person had been to a new place so whenever you join a new organization when you find things are you know in a different uh, scenario you are you get you know uh, i mean you don't know anyone how to introduce yourself so if they don't take proper uh, you know you are not being properly welcome or you are being ignored you feel frustrated but you know some companies like now the corporates are uh, following this uh, you know this is how when the new employee joins an organization so, you know on the board they mention then you know the messages now everybody has your mobiles or laptops so you get all the information you become familiar with so that is all about induction now i'll show you about the uh, staff training and development okay just uh, just a minute this is about staff training and development because you know when you there are, as i told you now a different department is there who takes care of the training and development you have to so many whether it's a new product or something whether it's a new software where you need to learn you have to be familiar with the users so that is why organizations are imparting training to their staff yes so here we come staff training and development so this is the unit 13 so staff training and uh, development is very essential as i told you in the hotel industry now beside the hr department yes there's a training and development department now this is also a part of the sub department of the hr department they particularly ensure that the whoever because interns are coming you know interns that is so interns are, it should be properly imparted training so that is the reason they are even it is not only about the interns you know they wanted to it is you know it is very necessary um, you know sometimes you need to train your existing staff so they uh, de design different modules those modules include you know your grooming your communication the new products which have been launched how to uh, equip yourself with those resources with the tools at the same time also it includes a motivational talk also they bring some motivation expert they get some expert from the other uh, industries uh, of the same uh, you know i mean of from other companies of the uh, same uh, design like so that you know they have an interaction so they have experts coming from different uh, organizations so that is why staff training and development is very much uh, required so basically after going through this unit you should be able to discuss why training and development is very important and um, you need to find out what is the why the training need why there is a need for the uh, training for the employees and you need to define the objectives of the training and the training programs what are the different various management development programs at various levels you know someone is at the supervisory level you know he has been promoted to the executive level so you know a proper training now he was a supervisor you know he used to supervise his subordinates now he has moved to the executive level so he has a different job description so in that we you know companies what happened they sent to them to a different place where proper training is being given so suppose you are working for a company and those company they have different offices all over the uh, all over the country at different cities and all now when you are being given a promotion where you think that a, a training is being required so what happened they organize a training at their head office okay so so all the cities which were having the offices and especially those who are at the executive level they uh, design a training program and this training program is like in house training program and in house training program is you have to stay in the hotel you have to go the uh, training for around 10 to 12 hours you it is you know it has it includes your breakfast it includes your lunch then in the evening you have some you know to refresh yourself they also organize uh, different um, uh, programs like entertainment programs uh, yeah, you know? uh, 
so they organize various entertainment programs followed by a cocktail dinner okay this is how so that training program may be 3 to 4 hours so that is why it is mentioned you should know the objectives of mindful development at various levels and understand you also need to understand the various techniques of management development and you should know uh, the need for and techniques for evaluation of training programs Abdullah, can you please, uh, please, ha? Huh? Okay, okay. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Abdullah, please mute yourself. You know the sound is disturbing. Uh, please mute yourself. The sound is disturbing. Please mute yourself. So, uh, what is training and development? Abdullah, please mute yourself. Now, why uh, training and development is very necessary, especially the staff training and development. It is an ongoing process, okay? An ongoing process that the organizations undertake. Why do they undertake? They undertake to enhance the knowledge, the skills, and the abilities of their employees. Abdullah, can you please mute yourself? It's creating disturbance. Yes. So, staff training and development is a way, is an ongoing process, and uh, it is uh, that organizations usually undertake the various training and uh, development programs to enhance the knowledge, the skills. the abilities of their employees and it is very essential important for an organization to invest in training because you know it is a investment it is a uh, they think that it's a it's a uh, uh, return on investment because once they train the staff the employees they become more productive the job they could have, uh, they could do in uh, you know they had done in 2 hours now they could do the job in 1 hour so their productivity increases so that is very important that is the reason where you need to enhance your skills you know now everybody is so much uh, uh, learning about all these artificial intelligence machine learning you go to a restaurant the robot you know, i mean there's a chat bot where you can uh, you know uh, have an uh, interaction with the chat bot what is the menu what you like what are the prices why these are important because you know people are learning it uh, reduces your time maybe it is an expensive but it reduces your time and these are very much needed your skills it enhances the productivity also so what happen it is essential for organizations to invest in the training and development uh, programs that is being various training and development programs as i have mentioned with the examples so to ensure that their uh, you know staffs and employees have the minimum competence enough to perform their job effectively and uh, product in a productive manner and contribute to the success of the uh, organization so thus you can say training programs they can be conducted internally but the organizations own trainers you can or as i told you sometimes you know what happens the uh, organization uh, have their training inside the organization i mean it's, it's uh, within the campus only so it's an uh, training for all the employees but sometimes these trainings are being imparted at different locations and sometimes what happen uh, it is not always at the head office of that company of the corporate but is always at locations you know destinations where tourism comes into effect you know these they try to uh, conduct different types of uh, training programs at different destinations you know where these employees they also uh, undertake the training at the same time they also get to know about a new place you know they have refreshment you know they are sometimes uh, these um, uh, what happen uh, like i'll give you a small example uh, suppose an organization wants to conduct training for their employees so what happen they first thing is they have their training module ready they get it done who have who are the experts you know experts from different um, uh, 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 diff i mean companies uh, of the same but at a different levels at the higher levels the experts are being invited and the uh, 
program is being organized at a different, at a very beautiful destination. Maybe uh, like Goa, I have explained you Goa. So take an example. So what happened? This company has a negotiation with the travel agent. So the travel agent, what he does, he has a, he informs the hotel. So, you know, he informs the hotel and he says, I need 10 rooms. 10 persons will be, 10 uh, guests will be arriving from this date to this date, as well as I need a conference hall, also a banquet hall. And in this package, you know, there will be a breakfast should be included, lunch should be included, dinner should be included, I mean, followed by a cocktail dinner, and there should be some entertainment. And that is how they design the package with the help of the travel agent. And the travel agent designed the package and they uh, inform the hotel he, these are the requirements the hotel then provide all the uh, product i mean services that is being required by the travel agent and the travel agent then uh, gives the you know after designing the package uh, informs the company so you know different uh, staff employees from i mean of the company which are located in different cities they go to goa and they, in the morning they have the training they then the, it is then followed in the lunch i mean till evening the uh, training period goes on and in the evening they have some sightseeing programs as well as some entertainment programs followed by a cocktail dinner. So, you know, they also feel enthusiastic. They also feel motivated. Always work, work, you know, that would make you more stressful. So, you know, in between the work, there should be some activities which would motivate you. That is what is once you are being motivated, you come up with new activities, you come up with new ideas where those ideas can be initiated for the betterment of the organization. So, that is how. Uh, you know, you need to have training in your certain areas where that is uh, being taken care by the employee. So this, uh, you know, programs can include a wide range of topics such as your technical skills, your leadership development, then your communication skills have tell, then the customer care service, then about compliance tell. So there are different portfolios where the training can be imparted. And this development opportunities can be also be provided to employees to help them grow and advance in their careers. And this can include, you know, job rotations, job rotations, because suppose you are now working in the restaurant, okay? You are in the food and beverage service department, then you may be shifted to the, uh, shifted to bar, how the bar runs and all, okay? So there includes job rotations, then there are some mentoring programs, then there are some coaching sessions and educational assistance. Also education, you need to, you know, knowledge is very important. You have to upgrade yourself. So that is, you know, so many new things are coming. So you need to educate yourself. And why education is very important. Education is very important. It keeps you young and also uh, hooked to the field you are uh, in. That is why education is very important. So there are various mentoring programs. Then there are coaching sessions and all. So... Uh, especially by investing what happens by investing in uh, staff training and development the organizations can improve the employee performance as i told you once they are getting motivated they are being given incentives and all they also feel motivated so what happens by investing in staff training as well as in development the corporates they can improve the employee performance at the same time they can increase their job satisfaction increase their productivity and last but not the list but very important employee retention to turnover rate has to be reduced so employee retention is very important it also helps in creating a culture of continuous learning because you know there should be continuous learning learning is a never-ending process you should keep on learning and there is no end and it's a never-ending process so it also helps in creating a culture of continuous learning and development within the organization which is very crucial in today's rapidly changing business environment, okay? There are so many competitors. How you have to compete with the other organizations? You have the you have a market value, you know, you have to compete with other organizations. So those, these training sessions are being conducted. So you become more aware of the knowledge, what is happening in your field and so. And you become more equipped and give your more uh, product, you can be more productive for the organization. So in conclusion, staff training and development you can say is a very important 
um, uh, role i mean you know it's a very uh, very critical aspect of any the success of any organization and providing the employees with the necessary knowledge as well as necessary skills as the organization can ensure that they are being equipped with the necessary resources tools to meet the challenges you know of their roles and contribute to the achievement of the organization goals you know there is the swot analysis you know you know they should know the strengths they should uh, then a stands for your strengths w stands for your weakness now it is no, not known as weakness they say it is your challenges then you have i mean your weakness then you have opportunities you have opportunities and threats that is now no, not known as threats are now been replaced by challenges your adversity so there are a lot of challenges but you should know what are your strengths what are your weakness and how to overcome this and therefore the these trainings are being provided to motivate the employees okay so development is basically a long term educational process utilizing systematic and organized procedure by which managerial personnel frequently receive assistance in developing the skills particularly conceptual and human relations skills that is very important training is necessary for improving the quality and standard of uh, work of the employees and it is necessary very much important when a person has to move from one job to another because maybe of transfer because of promotion and so on so you know there should be a moral values should be there efficiency should be there productivity should be there you know so that is very important okay so these are some like you know uh you need to analyze you have to how the how our training module is being developed you need to analyze you have to design then develop that program then you have to implement that program then you have to evaluate suppose you develop a training module so how you first you need to design you have to develop then you have to implement for the uh, for your uh, employees then you have to evaluate in the sense ki after implementing that training program how useful it is for the uh, employees as well as for the organization okay so there are you know uh, training methods on the training on the job methods of the job methods you have apprenticeship you have lectures you have conferences you have seminars as i have told you now hotels you will be finding lot of conferences lot of seminars you know the hotel business is running for that you know they have lot of conferences lot of seminars lot of workshops organized by different companies what is the objective what is the aim the main objective is to train the employees that is the reason why different conferences different workshops uh, are being organized you know people from different uh, areas globally they come they discuss on a particular uh, subject topic that is known as conference you know so they give their views they give their ideas they give their opinions thoughts which are being discussed so training is very much a part of all this okay so you have all this type of uh, techniques like job rotation you know rotation in observational assignments then middle level rotation in assistant position unspecified rotation among managerial position you are being uh, transferred from different position uh, from different outlet to another outlet as with a different position also okay so summary so i believe this unit have helped you to realize why it is necessary to train the new employees for their jobs as well as well as to retain the old employees for the new jobs that is being assigned to them it would you know also help you to understand how to set uh, as i told you training programs you have to design then you have to develop then you have to implement then you have to evaluate also not only implementing the you think that implementing the particular training period would help the uh, help to generate revenue for the organization no it you also need to evaluate i told you there was a topic which have job evaluation so where that is very necessary you have to evaluate so you must have now understood why that training and development are very important are very crucial for the organization and there are two different aspects and they have to be very handled uh, very efficient manner in a very uh, proper in a very customized manner that has to be very customized as different entities okay and why it is necessary to develop managers in an organization and how this can be done successfully by training and development okay so that was all focused in this unit to today you are at working at a supervisor level 
tomorrow you'll become a manager of an organization when you are becoming the you when you get the position of a manager you are being entrusted with lot of more responsibilities so you need to train yourself you should you have the when you are a manager you have to have the uh, leadership skills so there are training programs of where how you can enhance your leadership skills so that is what is being the module how why training is very important okay and um, here i think i can uh, show you a, a small video one or two minutes video but just let me see one minute huh? <clears throat> Is your small business relying on an email inbox to handle customer service? Hmm. That's pretty common. When you're starting out, handling customer service. <laughs> Yes, I'll show you another video on um, uh, training. Okay, one minute. This is a small video, one minute, so you'll have an idea. One sec. Yes. So here you go. Okay. The onboarding training. Mike, the first day at a new job. Hi, Mike, the new employee. Yes. Okay. Follow me. Today we will have an employee onboarding training. Our training includes company culture, employee handbook, products and services, staff appraisal, business process, mentor and teamwork, business etiquette, evaluate and improve. These eight part of training contents help employees familiarize company and increase efficiency. Employees with higher motivation will increase productivity and achieve better output. New employee onboarding, train employees from company, teamwork and individual aspects. Employees will know the team and have better cooperation with them. <laughs> After months, assess and evaluate the performance of new employees. Motivate high performance employee and improve employee management. Come be a part of our team. So, you understood that was on employee training. You need to know about your uh, uh, company's, uh, you know, rules, regulations, and all culture and all. So that is an example. So you have training for different modules. Also. You know, when you are being promoted, you need to know about the products, about the services and all. Okay. So I'll now move to the last unit that is motivation and productivity. Huh? One sec. Now I'll show you this, uh, this one. One minute. Yeah, motivation and productivity. Yes.
so here comes motivation and productivity so uh, this is the unit 40 so uh, when we talk about uh, motivation and productivity news you know employees have to be motivated unless and until they are motivated they won't be able to give the uh, their better uh, output so that is very important right so um, so after reading this unit you should be able to list the important motives that influence the employee behavior you know if you are being properly uh, taken care of you'll be always feeling happy contribute for the environment but if you are not properly you know uh, taken care of then your behavior also changes that reflects on your behavior if you are happy with an organization that reflects on your behavior so that is very important okay uh, then understand the hierarchy theory correctly evaluate um, uh, statements about motivation to work and learn how to create a motivational climate. You should have a motivational culture, work environment. That is very essential. So what is uh, one of the, uh, you can say, you know, productivity, uh, like motivation and productivity, uh, why it is very important. You can say one of the key benefits of uh, staff, uh, mm, uh, you can, uh, staff training, what I was telling the previous unit, staff training and development, it is increased motivation and productivity. So you can say uh, why training is being imparted. The training is being imparted, development is required because it increases the motivation and the productivity of the employees. So once the productivity is at a higher level, obviously it would result in a uh, you know, uh, success of the organization. Okay. So when employees receive uh, proper, when employees receive proper training, guidance, development opportunities, they feel they are valued, you know, they are important for the organization that is invested in by the organization. Now, when this training is being imparted to the employees, obviously it is an investment, investment on the employees. When the company is investing on the employees, there should be a return. So this is an, uh, there should be a return on investment. This training is return on investment. Organization is investing on whom they are investing. They are investing on the employees. They sh there should be the productivity has to increase. That is the reason. So, you know, they feel value. So this can lead to higher levels of job, job satisfaction and motivation as employees see that their personal and professional growth is important to the organization. See, when we spend so much long hours in result, we should also get something, okay? So it is why are you working uh, so hard? We are working to lead a, uh, you know, a satisfied life. Whatever needs and wants are there, we can satisfy those needs. So that is, it's not only about a personal growth, but also about your professional growth. Personal growth means you want to buy, purchase a house or you want to buy a mobile iPhone, you can purchase. On the, that's a personal. And on the other side, your professional growth, you are a supervisor, now you are becoming a manager, then a senior manager and so on. That is how it happens. So acquiring new skills and knowledge through this training programs, employees can become more efficient, more effective in their roles. So they can learn, you know, they, uh, they, uh, I mean, they are able to learn new techniques, best practices and strategies that would help them perform their jobs more efficiently. And this can, what happens as a result, this can lead to increased productivity and improved performance as employees are being equipped with the necessary resources, necessary tools which they need to excel in their position. So that has been given. Now you are being given a work where you being where you need the internet. You are being given a, um, a laptop, but you are not being given the internet facility. So how would you feel? How would you work? Okay, that is what is. So you should be given the proper resources and the proper tools. Furthermore, you can add on like training and development can also. Uh, make the employees feel more confident, you know, in their abilities. They feel, yes, now training has been given, so I can give my best result. Because company will also ask, you know, the training has been imparted, so where is the result? You have to show through the output. So when once the training is being given to the employees, they also feel more confident in their abilities. And when employees have the necessary skills, they have the necessary knowledge to perform their jobs well, they are more likely to take on new challenges, new opportunities. When new opportunities come, new challenges come, they are able to face that. 
we see lot of movies you know to motivate ourselves so where you can see you know see when something is there you have to there's some innovation who is doing the innovation mankind human beings only doing the innovation yes they are being provided with the uh, stuff that is the resources the tools so you know they also feel challenged well i can accept i am accepting the challenge i can do my best so this can lead to increased innovation and creativity which is also very important within the organization as employees feel that they are being empowered you know they are being empowered to contribute their ideas their innovation skills their creativity for the development of the organization okay innovation is very important creativity is important if you do the same job again and again you know after some time you will feel frustrated there should be some innovation there's there uh, there should be some creativity so where you have to sometimes strain yourself what are the other companies are doing why you are doing so many uh, courses on online you know you are just know why you are doing because you can increase your creativity you can increase your productivity you can come up with some new skills new technologies that are happening so that is what is very necessary so you can say overall the staff training and development is plays a very crucial role you know uh in motivating the employees which is very much necessary and increasing the productivity so by uh, you know there are some issues in managing people why do the people behave the the way they do what are some of the significant things people look for their jobs when you know some are you know if you tell some of your staff you stay uh, you know today you just uh, give another one more uh, uh, extra because you have some pending works to be completed but you know some staff are very reluctant why should we spend one hour you know time is very expensive for us but some stuff you know they are very initiate they take that initiative yes sir yes madam i'll just spend one hour. because you know in result in you know in a uh, lieu of that they are getting some opportunities some benefits so you should know how the staff can be uh, helped to perform to their maximum and how to gain the commitment and the loyalty of an employee that is very important you know you have some commitment towards your organization if you leave your job haphazardly and go don't complete that means you don't have commitment so you know your commitment is very important your loyalty to the organization is very important maybe you are working with some security uh, agency and you if you just you know uh, i mean that is which needs to be kept secret and if you open up that then you know the secrecy of that organization gets uh, you know people come to know so that would create an issue create so you have to be very loyal to the organization and one thing is very important as i have mentioned you should know how to retain people in the your staff in the organization so you know hierarchy of human uh, maslow's theory like there i have given you maslow's you know psychological needs safety and security love and belonging self esteem and self actualization this is very important see all behavior is goal directed okay uh, you know that okay and human beings want certain things in a certain order of priority they need no i need to complete this in a proper time you know why i'm working because of food clothing and all but at the same time there are some safety and security needs and human beings want to make sure that they will continue to have their psychological needs satisfied and for what they need for this to have their psychological needs satisfied for that they need to have job security they need to have protection from any physical dangers not only for themselves and their family because their family depends on them for you know uh, for the he is a breadwinner of the uh, family so the family depends on them so that is very important so once they have an optimum level of security uh, there are you know third order of needs come into operation and directs their behavior so these are the needs for love for belongingness and acceptance and human beings want affection from whom from the fellow beings that is my team in the family you need cooperation from your family members similarly in society also you need the same and also from the organization you work for your working environment so that is you should have the free affection from your fellow beings you know that is what is you need you have to build a positive cultural environment okay so community organizations worker organizations 
professional bodies, etc. They need to satisfy this need for belongingness and acceptance by the society. And once the needs for love and acceptance are satisfied, another set of needs which may be called the higher order social needs, it comes to the surface and directs the behavior of the people. So what does this need include? This need includes the needs for achievement. You know, I wanted to have promotion. I wanted to be at a better position. You need recognition. You need popularity. You have a social status. You get the power. You have the influence over others. So these are also called ego needs or esteem needs. When this social needs are also satisfied, then comes the needs for understanding one's own ability and potentials and using them to the maximum. The competition and search of satisfaction is from here within. That is to able to exploit one's own abilities. And, you know, and most uh, development to the maximum potential. And you should know your worth. You know, I'm able, worth this. So you have to sometimes, you know, when a person shift from one organization to another organization, he knows I'm capable. I know my abilities. I know my capabilities. So I need this much. I mean, this should be my salary. So most people, anyway, if you see the uh, statistics, you know, you'll find that most people are struggling with one or more of their needs below this order. And very few attend this highest motivation level of self-discovery. And they need to exploit one's own potential. So the human motives can be organized in the form of a pyramid. And this need hierarchy theory was first developed by Abraham Maslow. And hence, it is called Maslow's need hierarchy. Okay, Actually, human behavior is directed by several needs and combinations at a given point of time. So here I show you, this is a cycle of physiological needs, then you have the safety and security, then you should have the loving belongingness, you feel welcome when you go or join a new organization, then you have the self-esteem and then the self-actualizing. So it's in a pyramid way. So hygiene and motivators, some, employ, some people, they argue that productivity of an employee depends on his or job satisfaction. If the employees are satisfied, then obviously it would result in higher productivity. And the productive, uh, you know, once the production of an organization increases, it would result also, you, I mean, uh, create more uh, revenue for the organization. And there is always, you know, have, you, it is very necessary to have highly satisfied workers. So, you know, they can also, once the employees are satisfied, they can give their best to the organization. And so motivation is very much required. So absence of dissatisfaction or presence of job satisfaction does not mean presence of work motivation. So the, you know, Hanberg, uh, behavioral scientist, uh, he's, no, uh, he's known for, you know, human behavior. He has done a lot of research on human behavior, differentiated these factors. You know, hygiene factors are very essential for people to work. But motivators play an important role in helping people to work more and better. See, you work, suppose you're working for, um, suppose, you know, in a hotels and all that is centrally air conditioned, you know. So you are most of the time or even if you work for the IT industry, you are in a AC uh, environment, you know, air conditioned environment. But suppose if you have to work in the fields and all. So you will feel tired and you feel, oh my God. So there are some hygiene is also, you know, it is very hygiene factors. They are very essential. Those factors should be provided for the people to work. But motivators, you know, they help you to do work better. Suppose you do something and I appreciate you, you know. Yes, you have really done a good job. You should be appreciated. You should be given an um, increment for that. So what you feel? You feel motivated. Okay. So the top managers, organizations, as well as personal and human resource development departments should understand this distinction between the two along with supervisors in all type of organizations. So this will help them to create conditions for work motivation, which would lead to more productivity. That is very important. And um, so creating, uh, the thing is that you need to create a proper motivational climate, which is that means where you have to, there should be a productive climate where the employees are being um, motivated, they become more enthusiasm, uh, enthusiastic to give their more better, you know, for the betterment of the organization. There should be a approachable um, climate 
problem solving climb uh, problem solving uh, attitude with the employees so create a climate of approach and problem solving then avoidance motivate individual you need to motivate employees sometimes they require, require individual motivation you should motivate them properly guide them properly counsel them okay so uh, you know uh, we have seen that productive output of an individual in relation to a job is primarily determined by his or her motivational structure and this structure is based on various types of needs and these needs are constantly changing that you also know i also know so you should be very aware of all this prepare yourself so therefore you can say the key to higher productivity lies in creating a proper motivational climate wherein the employee seems to be deriving satisfaction by doing a job so overall you can say the motivation is very important for an organization okay that is what is important so uh, this is uh, i'll show you a video that is based on motivation that is also a one minute video okay one sec How do you get started with digital marketing? With the complete digital marketing course on Udemy. Wait, I'll, I'll show you one minute, huh? one minute. Why employee motivation is very necessary for an organization. So this is a one minute video where you can, whatever we studied, you can have a look at this video and you can understand why motivation is very important for an organization, okay. There it goes. Yes. Fine. This is employee motivation is very important, okay? See, he's doing his work, then he is being burdened with work. The boss is giving him a lot of work. See, his productivity will reduce now. Now you see. See, the motivation is, employee motivation is reducing. He is doing it fast. He's getting, uh, you know, stressed. There, he goes to sleep. Look at the clock. Now, here comes the boss. Ah, if in between you have this, you know, entertainment or going for a break to have a sip of uh, tea, coffee, so you feel motivated. You also motivate yourself. Here the boss comes and when he goes, he sees him. There he's taking a nap because he's stressed out with the burden of work that is being given to him. There. The <laughs> see the revenue also, okay.
so since that was a small uh, video okay so i would um, one sec <clears throat> yes so uh, that was a small video on uh, motivation you need to keep your staff uh, in, uh, motivated so they can give their full productivity and uh, overall uh, you know staff training and development that also plays a very important role in uh, motivating the employees and increasing the productivity and of course by investing in the um, uh, growth and development of employees organizations can always create a a uh, positive work environment that is very much necessary and where employees you know they feel supported they feel encouraged at the same time they feel engaged and feel motivated to perform at their best levels okay so this can contribute uh, to the development overall success of an organization so that was all about uh, abdullah did you uh, uh, like did you understand whatever had been uh, taught in the class today Abdullah are you there okay so uh, thank you all of the learners i think uh, this uh, the um, study i mean the uh, powerpoint presentations as well as the videos that has been uh, shown today would be uh, i mean would made you all to understand why hr is very human resource is very important for an organization especially the training placement uh, motivation you know so thank you all of you